Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna and today we will continue the discussion of the gut vessels if you haven't watched the previous part yet where I explained the celiac trunk uh, you should definitely go ahead and watch that so you will understand this part better so now today we're talking about superior mesenteric artery and its branches and how exactly does it supply your entire gut area right so superior mesenteric artery we all know is going to supply the derivatives of the mid gut and what are these derivatives these are the duodenum after the opening of the bile duct the rest of the small intestine including the jejunum and ileum, your cecum, ascending colon, right two-thirds of the transverse colon. So this is a cutoff point. From here, your hindgut derivatives are going to be supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery. So let's talk about how the superior mesenteric arises. Superior mesenteric artery is going to arise just one centimeter uh, below the origin of the celiac trunk that we talked about uh, at the L1 vertebra right here. All right. So let's suppose it arose from the aorta. Now what it does, it basically this point is lying right behind the pancreas body. So the superior mesenteric artery arises right over here. So what happens is the superior mesenteric artery, it runs downwards and it's a very, it has a very interesting course. It runs downwards and towards the right side with its convexity towards the left side. Let me explain that to you real quick. So guys, remember one thing. First, it's trying posterior to the pancreas. And when it comes close to the third part of the duodenum, this horizontal part, it comes anterior to this part. All right. I want you to remember this very well. It runs first posterior to the pancreas and when it reaches the third part of the duodenum, it comes anteriorly to it. All right. So over here, it runs downwards and continues its course towards the right side. It's convexity. You can see it's towards the left side, right? So this is the left. This is the right. Fine. So this is uh, of importance because it has branches that are arising from the right side and branches that are arising from the left side. They're different. So before that, I just want to touch a very important clinical over here. The third part of the duodenum is susceptible to obstruction. Why? Because we all know that the aorta is lying posterior to the third part and the superior mesenteric artery is coming anterior to the third part. At times between these, the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery. So let's suppose there's the third part of the duodenum. Here comes your aorta behind it, posterior to the third part of the duodenum. And here comes the branch of the aorta, the superior mesenteric artery running in front of the uh, duodenum third part. Sometimes these two, if they ever get uh, close together, they can compress the third part causing obstruction in the intestine. So that was a small clinical right there. Now let's go back to the branches of the superior mesenteric artery. So what do we have to supply exactly? Our area of supplying is this entire coils of intestine and this curve of the large intestine. The coils, I've basically removed them. I've taken them out and put them over here. Obviously, they're occupying this entire area, but obviously we're going to remove them to better visualize the supply. So what happens is, let's suppose this here comes your superior mesenteric artery. What it's going to do is it's going to give its branches with its branches. It will supply all of this area, right? So obviously it'll give a branch for this colon, which is a transverse colon. Uh, then it will give a branch to the ascending colon. And then it will give a branch to where do you think this area can be called the ileocolic region because it has to give some blood supply to the terminal part of the ileum. This will be the middle colic because it's supplying the middle of the colon. This will be the right colic because it's supplying the right side of the colon. Uh, or the ascending colon and this will be known as the ileocolic because it's going to supply the ileum and the cecum and some part of the ascending colon right and from the left side of this superior mesenteric artery small intestine will be supplied right and this will be supplied with 12 to 15 jejunal and ileal branches now let's go ahead and talk about these branches in depth so the first branch of the superior mesenteric artery arises at the upper border of the third part of the duodenum. This is known as the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. If you remember, we just studied the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. The inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery will run within the pancreaticoduodenal curve and it ends by anastomosing with the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. So you can see there is a connection between the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery via this. All right. And during its, its course, it supplies the pancreas and the duodenum. Moving on, then what happens is your uh, superior mesenteric artery, as you can see right here, from the lower part of the pancreas, this superior mesenteric artery that's running towards, you can see it's going towards your right side. And this uh, superior mesenteric artery at the lower border of the pancreas is giving the first branch that is going to supply your transverse colon's right side. This will be what is known as the middle colic artery. All right. The middle colic artery, where do you think it will run? Within the abdominal cavity, how will you get to the transverse colon? 
of course by its peritoneal fold the transverse mesocolon so the mid middle colic artery will run within the transverse mesocolon to reach your transverse colon and supply it so here i have enlarged the image so you can see better so the first branch it's giving at the lower border of the pancreas is the middle colic now the middle colic will give right and a left branch all right the right branch of the middle colic artery will go and anastomose with the right colic artery and the left branch will go ahead and anastomose with the left colic artery simple basically what we're trying to do here is we're going to make an arch by anastomosing all these branches that is the main aim all right so our next uh, branch is the right colic artery so the right colic artery is going to arise right over here as the right colic artery will arise it will give a ascending and a descending branch now the ascending branch is quite obvious will anastomose with the right branch of the middle colic artery whereas the descending branch will go ahead and anastomose with what the ileocolic artery all right next we have the branch the ileocolic artery as the name says it it is lying around the terminal part of the ileum in the colon right so the ileocolic artery will arise from the superior mesenteric artery and as the ileocolic artery goes downwards it divides into a superior and a inferior branch the superior branch will anastomose with the descending branch of the right colic and the inferior branch will go ahead and is interestingly going to anastomose with the superior mesenteric artery and that's how the superior mesenteric artery will terminate so you can see over here this is the ileocolic artery and it's anastomosing with the uh, superior mesenteric artery so everything is inter anastomosing with each other to form this entire arch which we'll talk about later it's called the marginal artery uh, this entire arch is going to supply your entire colon right these are the branches emerging from the right side of the superior mesenteric artery now all of these branches go ahead and they divide into uh, further branches to supply all of these area the ileocolic is going to supply the terminal part of the ileum along with the cecum and some part of the ascending colon the right colic artery is going to supply most of the part of the ascending colon and the middle colic artery is going to be supplying the right two thirds of the uh, transverse colon so that's how the superior mesenteric artery is supplying your mid gut area and uh, apart from that another important part is that the ileocolic artery's inferior branch is going to give a couple of branches for this area right here obviously it'll give what are the things lying over here the terminal part of the ileum lies over here so it gives ileal branches for the terminal part of the ileum and then cecum so it gives anterior and posterior cecal branches and then it gives an appendicular artery for the appendix it gives a colic artery for your some part of the ascending colon and eventually ends up anastomosing with the superior mesenteric artery and that's how it terminates so now let's talk about the branches from the left side of your superior mesenteric artery are easy the 12 to 15 jejunal and ileal branches you can see right here these branches are 12 to 15 in number and they all of these will further divide into arterial arcades these are rows of arteries these rows of arteries from them further short straight arteries will come and supply your entire uh, jejunum and ileum within the mesentery of them right so these will run within the mesentery and they will supply via the vena recta So that is how the superior mesentery artery is supplying your entire mid gut. So this is how it works. So I really hope you understood that blood supply. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the inferior mesentery artery. So keep watching, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.